Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We have a, a customer's tractor, a John Deere L110. This actually has a Kohler Command engine on it, and it came in the shop with a no start condition. And I'm pretty sure I diag diagnosed it down to a uh, sheared flywheel key, which doesn't happen very often. But I want to show you guys uh, what to look for, and this may help. The engine that we're working on here is a Kohler Command 17 and a half horsepower motor. Alright, I'm going to give you the, uh, the model and spec really doesn't matter, but if you guys ever need to know your model and spec, it has a sticker and it says model number, so it's a CV491S, and the spec number is a 275, I think that's a 09. Alright, um, but basically this requires the all Kohler Command engines in the single cylinder version of them. Uh, it has a very strange sound when you try to start it. It's kind of like a, uh, a popping sound. I'm going to try to make it happen for you guys and we'll see if it makes it. Alright, so that cough, that cough right there. It's like a backfire. And it sounds really like it's going to try to start, but it won't. Okay, so basically right there, it's backfiring and it's acting all erratic. Now, everybody's going to have their opinions on what this is, and, and I'm telling you right now, we're going to go through it. Um, the first thing I did was I changed the spark plug out, and that definitely did not it. That was not it. Um, the other thing that you guys can look for is underneath the carburetor, all right? This is what they call a fuel shutoff solenoid. Now, this either works or it doesn't work, and if you just turn the key to on, you'll hear it click. It's two person job almost. And I'm gonna have the camera get down real close and maybe you'll be able to hear this. But I'm gonna turn the key on and off and you listen for it. Okay, I think you guys probably heard that. And what that is, is it's actually working. Okay, so that's not our issue. So the carburetor is definitely not the issue. If the carburetor is an issue, normally they either will run only on choke because they have a blockage. Um, it doesn't have, you don't get that pop and miss. I mean, sometimes I guess you could, but I haven't really in all the years I've been doing this. Usually carburetor issues come with a, uh, will run just with fuel added to the carburetor and you can get it to run and it shuts off after the fuel has gone. This one here is getting fuel. We have checked all that. Um, we checked the spark. It has spark. And then you, you definitely want to check your compression. And this one here is pretty straightforward. You just come up to the top of the motor, and this guy's got really good compression. You should be able to turn it over, and it's going to be a little tricky to get the piston past top dead center. All right, so now we're past top dead center. Piston's coming around. It's going to go back up to top dead center, and we're going to have compression. So right there is top dead center on compression stroke, and it's tight. So compression's there. So then what? All right, so then you're like, okay, well, we got fuel, we got spark, but it's popping and missing. And in my eyes, popping and missing is definitely either valves or ignition. The tools that I'm gonna use are right here, and I'm gonna get back to the spark, but I just wanted to show you some of the tools. I use an electric ratchet. What we need for this job is one, your spark plug socket. Um, this one here is a, I think it's a, it is a 5 8 because we're using a, 5 8 deep socket for the spark plug comes out of there. The spark plugs, the champion are RC12YC. That's an RC12YC. I use NGK, which is a different kind, um, but this is the spark plug that actually came out of it. It's an RC12YC. Um, for, uh, this is a 13 millimeter that we're going to use. We have an 8 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket. I use this. This is the this is my fender, fender clip tool, which uh, takes off the booties real well on the spark plugs without ruining the, um, the boots. Uh, two 716 wrenches, I would definitely recommend disconnecting the battery when you do this job. Uh, we do have a uh, 532 Allen wrench that we need for this job. And also, I'm using a steering wheel puller. I know Kohler has its own pullers, and sometimes you can even use just a, uh, a nice size hammer and, and a pry bar to get the flywheel off which I'm going to show you but I'm also right now we're going to just confirm that we have good spark I'm going to use this tool to get the spark plug boot off and put a spark tester on it which I'm going to grab right now okay so here's my inline spark tester and uh, you can pick it up anywhere there's all different kinds of spark testers this one I use is just convenient for me to use this type let's go over and check it out 
that the spark plug boot on the collars, they're right in here, and people tend to grab them here. And if you grab here, you can pull off the metal part of the, the spark plug wire and it'll stay on the spark plug. So I use this tool and I go deep down inside here and I pop it off the spark plug, just like that. All right, and so your metal part that's inside the booty here will stay inside on the wire. Can't tell you how many times I've seen people pull this wire and the metal part on the inside the wire will stay on the spark plug. And then what you're gonna do is I'm gonna put my inline spark tester right on the spark plug itself. And then put the other half in here. Okay, and then we're gonna see a spark here. Now when I crank it over, it may backfire, but it's also gonna show us that we have spark. Okay, so we have good spark. So obviously that's not the problem. That spark plug that's in there is actually brand new. All right, so we're still, we still have the issue. So we have a backfiring issue. All right, we got good spark, we got good compression, the carburetor is fine, so what's next? All right, so here's where I'm gonna tell you to disconnect your battery. I already have it for the video purposes, I'm just gonna disconnect the, the negative, and that's why the 2716ths, I mean, some people, originally John Deere used metric, so they had um, eight millimeter or 10 millimeter bolts in here, and through time, at least for my customers, I put in the 716ths standard type. I'm just gonna take off the battery, and then we're gonna come over, around the other side. And we'll take off the air cleaner cover. And you guys may wanna zip through this video a little bit, just uh, but right now what I have to do is I have to take off this cover to get to what I'm gonna show you, maybe the issue. And we're gonna have to take off this cover here, which is eight, it's an eight millimeter here, okay? You're gonna have to pull this cable, pull this down off of your voltage regulator, be careful. Now this guy here has got a weird one. It has a 5.30 seconds uh, Allen head on it and that's gotta come off. Normally they're eight millimeter, but you may or may not have that. So I'm just gonna take it off with my T handle. And it takes a little bit of time to get this off. Maybe I can fast forward all this. So that's the that's the oddball out. Now the other ones are all eight millimeter and 10 millimeter. I'm just trying to get this off so it doesn't hold down. Okay, so I'm gonna get my electric ratchet, which is a lot easier for me to use, being that I was born with one hand. This side, and then we do have a couple on the other side. Okay, we have one here, which is a eight millimeter. And then we have an eight millimeter here. This one you don't have to take out all the way, but I'm gonna, because you can slide it up over here, over that. It has a little spot where it just comes right up over there. Now we have to go to 10 millimeter, and remember where these go. The real long 10 millimeter bolt goes onto your oil tube, and then you have one here. Okay, and one in the front. Now that should be everything for this cover. So we get this cover off. Because what we're getting to, being that I'm pretty sure this is out of time, we're trying to get to the flywheel key. Okay, and this is your ignition coil. We're just gonna pass these magnets right here. These magnets pass the ignition coil and it tells the spark plug, the spark plug wire to ignite at this point. So think about this. If, this, if this is out of time, then this comes by at the wrong timing spot, it's gonna throw off the spark. Even though we have good spark, if it's not timed properly, we're gonna get that kind of backfire. And I'm pretty sure what we're gonna find is a sheared flywheel key. Now, this screen housing looks like it's never been off because it has the original clips right here. The clips hold down this, this is, metal clips that hold this down and they're a little tricky to get off right there's one and there's one over here normally they just have these you just pull them up out of their studs here they're plastic and they'll come right off now i don't think you necessarily need these metal clips but if you can push the metal clips back on straighten them out and put them back on and use them again i think i lost one um that'd be great if not they should stay down just by you know pushing right over your plastic tabs they should stay 
Okay, once we get that off, looks like we gotta take these off here. And they look like they might be 10 or eight. I think they're they're an eight millimeter. Let's take these off. All right, so this will come right off. And there's the flywheel bolt right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off. Now there's a key, there's a keyway in here that will time against the crankshaft. And if this is sheared, this is gonna be exactly why this is backfiring and not running correctly. So that is a 13 millimeter. And if, if my thought is correct, from the factory, if nobody's touched this thing, and this is loose, let's see if this is loose. I'm not even gonna use an air gun. Oh, look at that. That wasn't even tight, and that's it right there. I have not been into this yet, and this is the first time into it, and this bolt was just hand tight. And this is the problem, is that being that it was, I don't know how it loosened up through time, but it did, and I'm thinking this may be sheared. Okay, so now you're like, okay, well, how do we get this off? Well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta take off your ignition coil because your ignition coil actually will hinder where the, it's actually in the way where the teeth are to the flywheel here. So you have to take this off. Now, when you put this back on again, you're gonna have to line up your magnets here, okay? There's a gap, okay? Now this gap here between your magnets and the ignition coil itself, the, the little arms right here, it's gotta be pretty close. I usually go between 10 and 13 thousandths, okay? And that's basically like a, um, like a, just a piece of, uh, of, well, I use a feeler gauge you can use. I uh, have made myself a tool to put this back together again as far as getting between 10 and 13 thousandths. If you look in the book, you're gonna get a specific setting on it. Let me uh, get these off real quick. Eight millimeter bolts that hold your coil on. And I just noticed if you guys haven't seen this, guess what, it looks like we had mice. And granted, if the mice chewed through that that's a ground wire so, so technically that could be the issue but i don't see any arcing even though it's a ground wire it probably shouldn't arc at all um but that could also give you intermittent spark uh, but that wasn't our problem because this is the ground wire but anyway we're going to take this off and definitely going to fix that with some heat shrink to get this thing back together again but take the coil out of the way so that the, now these teeth are not in the way now we have to pull this flywheel all right, now that's where I use my puller. This, these are definitely metric. It's a metric uh, holes here, okay? And I'm gonna put the bolt back in. And I think I'm gonna take the spacer off, the washer off of here. There's a couple different ways you can get this flywheel off. Basically the correct way is to use a puller. We have a puller to use, so we're gonna use a puller. You could also use just a, a hammer and if you be real careful you put the bolt back in the, the crankshaft and what you can do is you can tap on that bolt but while you're prying up underneath the flywheel you have to be really careful when you pry under the flywheel because you can damage the, the aluminum housing of the engine so it's not really something you should do but I've done it a lot in my business and it works but what I'm doing here is I'm gonna use a puller, and when I'm using a puller, what I'll do is I'll get it snug, tight, and then when I get this cranked in, I'm not sure what size that is right there. Yeah, it's a 5 eighths. Now I'm gonna use a electric impact to tighten this up. You can use a wrench. Oh, it came right up, how about that? That was loose, that flywheel was loose. Basically, I just put a little pressure on that puller and it popped the flywheel right up. So my, my guess is that this, this is going to have a sheer key. And if it has a sheer key, that's exactly why this engine would not run. And it doesn't happen very often. But I have noticed that the Kohler commands, if you, if you have a bolt that is loose on top of the flywheel. And it, that was pretty loose, it wasn't tight at all. Let's see if we can get this off. They're very heavy, be careful. Ugh. I did see it, I know I saw it pop up. There it is. Okay. All right, so guess what? It is sheared. 
because this is where it's supposed to be and the other piece is in here if you can see that you see right down inside there you see where that yellow mark is you see that keyway in there it's sheared okay so here it is the sheared key so what we have to do is get both of these pieces out put a new keyway in and uh, i'm going to pick them out right now and we'll come back to it at the point of putting a new key in and we'll start from there Okay, so this is the two pieces, the two halves you can see right here. It looks like a half a moon when it's together, but here's the two pieces. Okay, so I got the one piece out of here, which is the crankshaft side. And then also, ultimately I got it out of here, which is the flywheel side. And I'll show you on the bench, the sheared key right here. Two pieces go together to make one piece. Okay, so that's the, that's the key. I know you can, you may be able to get one at your local hardware store. I'm not sure what this size is, or you can go to the parts lookup breakdown, um, and you can use your color spec and model number online, and you can look it up to find that part number. You can probably order it through Kohler. Not sure if you take this key to the hardware store, you're going to be able to match it up to this one here, but I do know as a fact that this one here is the OEM coming out of the engine, so we're going to put this back in. Sometimes these are a little tricky getting in. Sometimes I, I sanded it to make it a little bit easier for the video purposes. You have to tap these in and you do the, the moon side, which is the half moon side, has to go in on the crankshaft. So the smooth side is going to be sitting out and that's where you put the flywheel over it. So let's go ahead and do that. Sometimes it's, it's easy, sometimes it's hard. This one I can tell. You can tell when you push these in if they're going to stay or not. Like sometimes I've actually used... I hate to say grease, but you got to get these guys to stay. So when you push the flywheel over this, that these don't push out. So you got to kind of get it straight in the line. I'm going to tap it in a little teeny bit with a hammer, not too hard. Then the tricky part is putting the flywheel lined up over it. So it doesn't pop out the bottom. And that's the tricky part. And then I have to get a flashlight if it actually has set up properly. And this one looks like it is perfect and it's in line. I'm not sure if the camera can actually see that or not. But you can see right down in on there. It's a little, let's see if it gets some kind of light on that. Yeah, you may, may or may not be able to see that. The keyway is right down inside there. You, yeah, it's a good picture right there. Okay, so now that this is on, we want to put the bolt back. Okay, you don't want to over torque it, but it's got to be tight. All right, now once we have this on, we want to get the coil wire back on. And I am going to fix this wire that the mouse is chewed, but I'm not going to do it until after we see if this actually fixes the problem. All right, so get your bolts in there. These are eight millimeter guys. All right, now what? this is how I reinstall this coil is so I put the coil on and then I push the coil there's a it's slotted okay so this moves just a little bit okay that we got to get a certain gap between the magnet and the armature here coil slash armature same thing okay so I'm going to take a ratchet and tighten it down while it's always pushed back not forward push back I meant forward on the flywheel because some people think forward going to the engine side but yeah so I'm going to tighten it down to where this armature is away from the flywheel then we put the magnet right in front of it okay now there's a big gap that gap's got to be closed up to a certain degree I actually through the time doing this this is called microfish <laughs> and people don't even know what microfish are anymore but they it's uh, old style the way we used to look up parts and we don't use microfish anymore but it's perfect if you put them together and you mic them I have this is perfectly set at 12 thousandths the gap for 12 thousandths through all the years of doing this or all, all the armatures I've done. I've never had a problem with 12 thousandths gap in an armature. You do have to make sure the magnet gets on both of these to do it properly. And stick it down in there. Then you want to loosen up your magneto, which is the coil. Loosen it up. The magnet will actually pull it towards it. And it holds it stationary for you because now it's magnetized to it. And then you just want to tighten it up. And there probably is a torque, torque for this too, but as you can say, you don't want to over torque in it. You don't want to over torque it and you don't want to leave it loose. And that pulls out. 
and we should have pretty much the correct gap to give a spark. Okay, now I could put this all back together again, and actually I'm gonna, because there is a voltage regulator involved, which I don't wanna have that disconnected from the loop. So we're gonna put our housing back over this, back over that. Four, all right, eight millimeter, again, eight millimeter socket for this. And you got to be careful here. There are actually some of these had a little uh, grommet that went up in here. I'm not sure why that grommet's not there, uh, but the, you have to push that up inside there. Some of them had grommets, some of them didn't. Or somebody was into this thing and took the grommet out. But you got to get everything to line up perfect. And never tighten up all the bolts until you have this all snugged up. You want to put all your bolts back where you have it. Remember I told you about the long one for the oil tube? That's a 10 millimeter. We got a 10 millimeter here. We have the 8 millimeter. I kind of left hanging off to the side here. These are fine threaded bolts that go into the, into the uh, engine block itself. The, the big 10 millimeter guys don't have that. But these little 8 millimeter guys are fine thread and they will cross thread in a heartbeat. And a lot of them actually get rusty through time. You just want to make sure you get everybody in before you before you tighten everything up. And then we have that Allen head one we have to deal with on this other side. Okay. And this guy here has got to make sure if you have any anything that was connected to these guys. Like this guy here is a wire. Uh, it's a bracket that helps to keep the wires going the right way. Make sure, you know, this one's a little tricky here, so I'm gonna use my wrench to get it started. Here you connect your voltage regulator connector. Important for that guy to be connected. If you just pull them straight down and off, they shouldn't have a problem as far as how, you, how they go back together. You could also mark it with a magic marker so you don't, let me get going on. Tighten them down, do the eight millimeters first. Much. I have to get back under here and fix this this wire that's been chewed on the by the mice anyway. This guy here we're gonna just pop on. Okay, now I'm not gonna snap it on there because I'm not done with the job yet, but just showing just showing you guys to button this up. Pop this guy back on, they'll push down and they will they'll literally snap themselves in place so you don't have to worry about as long as these aren't broken, this will this will stay on, not a problem. You definitely have to put the battery terminal back on. So that's why I gotta find the ground. So keep your battery terminals clean. As you can see, this guy has it in for service and they're pretty clean. Make sure they're tight. You gotta make sure these guys are tight uh, to make sure you have everything properly grounded and proper proper position wire right now. Just to make sure you have the, the best circuitry as far as getting the amperage from the battery to the engine. You wanna make sure everything is clean and tight. This should be buttoned up enough that we should be able to see if this thing will run. Now, if my guess is correct, this thing should fire up and run. All right, I just turned it off because we had sparking down here. And you gotta be careful with your voltage regulator. You don't wanna have, the reason why it sparked is because this is a ground from the voltage regulator and the voltage regulator is putting out, um, they got AC coming in, DC going out. Uh, so you, you have to make sure that this is tight. Now I should have tightened that down. That actually was uh, arcing there a little bit. I hope I didn't do any damage to the voltage regulator, but that entails just uh, checking your, bot your uh, battery to make sure you have over 14 volts coming out of it when you're at full throttle and that voltage regulator will be fine. But I just wanna, I'm actually gonna tighten this up right now. Tight, I won't have any worries. Should not be any arcing. Up on choke. 
Şurası. Okay, so there we have it. We have a seared flywheel key. Doesn't happen very often at all, but on the Kohler Command engines, I have seen this. I've actually seen this on Briggs and Stratton engines too, but you just gotta make sure you check the simple stuff first. You check that fuel shutoff solenoid to make sure it's clicking, to make sure that's working properly. Like I said about the carburetor under here, usually the carburetors will not operate correctly. You'll either get a, um, a full choke scenario where it will run on full choke. That means it has a blockage and as soon as you bring it down off a choke, it'll stop. Uh, this one, I knew it ran before it came in. The popping and missing is what you have to look for on these. The popping and missing gives you, it's either a valve issue or it could be just like this. It was ignition timing being off just a hair. I mean, a little teeny bit. I'm not sure exactly how far that flywheel sheared but the magnets were not coming across the magneto and the right timing. And so the spark was not sparking when it should, giving you the popping and missing. Um, I hope this video helped a lot of people out there. I know it was kind of a, a little bit rushed and um, there is definitely a, uh, a torque on the flywheel bolt that you have to make sure you do correctly. And also the, the armature has a torque on them. I don't usually torque them at all. Um, we go back and torque these on, on that bolt for the for the crankshaft itself. If you all like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate everybody watching my videos. Uh, please subscribe and thanks for watching.